Hello everyone, my name is Ashutosh Bahogna. I am scientist with Indian Computer Emergency Response Team. In this session, we are going to discuss about the cyber security assurance, the methods and practices used by different entities, the countries to generate a cyber security assurance at a organization level, at a sector level and at a national level. In this session, we are going to discuss about First, we have to understand uh, what the assurance is. So, assurance and benchmarking. Assurance, we can say, is the state of mind in which one is free from doubt. So, it is defined in IS, ISO IAC TR 15443-2012 Information Technology Security Techniques Security Assurance Framework that assurance has demonstrated ability of an entity to perform its security objectives. So assurance is a different from a confidence, it's, uh, it's driven by the facts. So we have a confidence on some state, but it's driven by the facts. So it's uh, determined from the evidence produced by the assessment process of an entity. So we do the assessment, generate the evidence, and then we have the assurance. Similarly, the definition of the benchmarking goes like the it's, uh, the benchmarking is the evaluation against the, any standard um, or the best practices. So these are the fundamentals of the assurance and benchmarking. So there are uh, several studies done by the different organizations like uh, United Nations, uh, like ITU and they generated a different type of uh, assurance and benchmarking of, on uh, cyber security uh, domain. So the cyber security posture assessment and assurance practices implemented by 16 countries were studied to understand the global scenario, what is going on globally uh, to generate assurance in cyber security. And uh, we tried to identify different methods adopted for cyber security assurance at a national level. So how we can achieve the um, cyber security assurance at a national level was the objective of this study. So for that 16 countries were selected. So following models and data were considered for the study uh, like a cyber index from United Nations, community cyber security maturity model, cyber readiness index, national cyber security maturity models and we try to figure out uh, that how these models and frameworks uh, help in generating the assurance in cyber security domain at a national level. So uh, we consider this is from the ITU and uh, they have the global cyber security index and cyber wellness profiles of the countries. So what that they have in the framework is the uh, these five domain in which they done the study for a country that how they are doing in terms of a cyber security. So global cyber security index provides insight into cyber security engagement of countries profile and index generated by country level surveys and qualitative research. So these domains were identified in GCI and cyber wellness profiles by ITU. The first one is the legal measures. So how the country is doing in the criminal legislation, regulation and compliance in cyber space. Then there are a technical measures taken by the country like a computer emergency response team, computer uh, security incident response teams, national or a sector specific computer emergency response teams, standards and the certifications. Then the third is the organization level measures like uh, the, they have a national policy on cyber security, roadmap for the governments, responsible agencies and is there anything done in the domain of national benchmarking in uh, cyber security. So those are considered under the organizational measures. Then there is a category 4 on the capacity building, whether there is a standardization development, manpower development, professional certification, agency certification in domain of a cyber space. And then the cooperation, so how the country is doing uh, in a, for a cyber security, the intra-state cooperation, intra-agency cooperation, public-private partnership and the international cooperation. So under these domains, the, perform, the studies performed cyber and the rank to the country that how they are doing in the cyber security is assigned 
and uh, their uh, wellness profile is prepared and these these data is available in a public domain so you can go through the cyber security profiles of a different countries uh, you can go through in details that how the countries are doing in the legal measures technical measures organization measures what kind of a, what sort of a initiatives are there in a capacity building and the cooperation in a cyber security so national benchmarking officially recognized national or sector specific benchmarking exercises or referential used to measure cyber security development so this was the this is taken from the ITO that framework of cyber wellness profile so we have done the profiling of 16 countries uh, to how they are doing the benchmarking at national level so and then the further data of 16 countries were collected and analyzed so we consider the source of data internal and external so what we have done is the we collected from the government reports the stats and reports from the computer security incident response team websites of government and benchmarking agencies reports of international bodies and regional forums assessment reports and findings of auditors media reports and the press release so these data which is available in a public domain were collected to further enrich the information about a particular country that how they are implementing the national benchmarking how they are getting the assurance what sort of actions they are taking to generate the evidence driven confidence on the cyber security posture so after digging into the data analyzing the data for the those 16 countries we have identified these are the significant categories these are the practices and methods which were used for generating the assurance at the national level like we can see there is a cyber security development report so many countries are having a annual reports on a cyber security development uh, that may include the uh, type of the vulnerabilities identified, the incident handled, and the type of the initiative taken to improve the cyber security posture of a country. Cyber security exercises another category widely adopted by the countries for doing the preparedness assessment, for create generating the awareness, to improving the mutual relationship of the entities participating in the exercises so cyber security exercises is one of the most important tool a significant category for generating that sort of a assurance then there is a statistical data and trend reports which generated from the incident and the threats to the country or a sector so those data generally from the national computer emergency response team or sector computer emergency response team and the data is generated and used for generating the assurance and to find the trends and the what sort of a cyber security status of a country is then there are cyber security compliance and audits so in some cases the governments or sectors or as per the compliance and regulatory requirements uh, the entities were asked to do the compliance and uh, audits uh, so that was also used but it's not done for the uh, entire country since it's not possible so it's generally done for the critical infrastructure or the limited uh, sectors so that is also used to generate uh, cyber security assurance uh, few countries implemented the mutuality models and indexes um, uh, those are the standards uh, framework uh, they try to implement to measure the maturity of uh, the country the scale they are doing the cyber security initiatives in some cases countries and nations have done the cyber security survey so what they have done is that they collected the data in some cases from the citizens also in others the from the businesses and critical sectors and try to understand the posture of the cyber security in the country in some cases there is a cyber security related laws and regulation and uh, set up of supervisory agency so cyber security related laws and regulations are implemented to ensure uh, to have a better preparedness in the domain of cyber security so these were the significant categories which across the globe the countries are implementing to uh, improve their cyber security posture 
So if we look into the India, that how the cyber security assurance in India, so what type of the things we have and what type of initiative we have done in uh, generating the assurance at a national level is that uh, we have cyber security maturity ladder prepared and customized for the country and uh, there are a moderator driven self assessment of the critical organizations to identify their cyber security preparedness. We have the remote profiling services in which the agency or a team act as the attacker to generate a profile, security profile to identify the security posture of the target organization and critical sectors. We have the incident trends and reports. We are generating those reports, trends and understanding the trends uh, on the cyber security domain. We have a monthly and annual reports on the cyber security development and initiatives in country. There is an impanelment of auditing organizations, impaneling based on the skill set of auditing organizations so they can do the compliance audit, technical audits, vulnerability assessment, penetration testing of the government and critical sector organizations to generate assurance. Then there is a national cyber crisis management plan and incident response plans are prepared so that if there is a crisis or any incident, the entities or a sector or a country can respond according to that plan. Cyber security exercise as a tool is considered very important in India and adopted in various methods, various type of exercises conducted to generate the assurance, confidence to assess the preparedness and improve the cyber security posture of the entity. At a national level, uh, there are uh, Indian cyber crisis exercises, That's, those are the annual exercises uh, known as AIS and those are, these exercises are a technical exercises that means the simulated attacks are launched on a targeted organization to assess their preparedness on the exercise day. Then there is a cyber crisis tabletop exercises in which senior management, board members, decision makers participate. Those exercises are especially designed at the strategic level and uh, come together and discuss on the some scenario of the cyber crisis presented to them. And then we have the conducting the sector exercises. Those sector specific exercises in the finance sector for banks, for insurance, and the other related sectors. Similarly, in the energy sector, there are exercises are considered and the scenarios are developed specific to that sector. Then there are international exercises to improve the coordination and the cooperation among the different countries. So, bilateral. Now, multilateral cyber security exercises like at Asia Pacific level and international level, some bilateral exercises between countries to country are conducted to improve that cyber security cooperation and coordination. So, international exercises to improve the bilateral and multilateral coordination and cooperation in the cyber security are conducted in the country. So now this, this is about the cyber security assurance at the global and how, what type of activities are going in the India. So let's see now the roadmap if we have to achieve within an organization how to be better prepared to counter the cyber attack, how to improve the cyber security posture. So what should be the, our roadmap, what should the organization do? So there is the cyber security assurance roadmap for an entity. So the first thing is to understand what the information is and uh, what the information security. So if we go by the definition, it's the CIA, confidentiality, integrity and availability. And uh, there is a standard for that, information security management system, ISO, IEC. Uh, 27,000 series of a standards. So 27,001 is the, for the certification against the information security management system. In 2013 version, there are a 114 controls in 14 different groups. So like A5 is the information security policies. Then how information security is organized. Then how human resource security controls that are applied before, during or after employment. So these all things this ISMS, ISO 27000 standards bring the information security under the management controls. So it's having a category asset management. 
access control and managing the user access cryptographic technology to be implemented in organization entity physical security of organization sites and equipment operational security secure communication and data transfer secure acquisition development and support of information systems security for suppliers and third parties and incident management so you can see you can implement the ISO 27001 standard for achieving the information security management system to protect the information that's our the overall and uh, the ultimate objective so enter the information security when we are trying to do information security we have a various verticals at, as we can see from the controls and the, as per ISO 27001 we have to do the human resource security, we have to do the physical security, operation security and the other things. So there are a various, various verticals. One of the verticals is the cyber security. So cyber, when we talk about this connected world uh, in a cyber space, that is a little bit complex from the other verticals. Other verticals means from the physical security or, or the human resource security. So we, we may need a a separate framework for doing the cyber security so if you are doing that then NIST cyber security framework is the uh, approach which can be implemented to improve the cyber security within an organization so this NIST cyber security framework is the risk based approach to managing cyber security risk and is having a composed of three parts which is the framework core framework implementation ties and framework profiles so framework core is a set of cyber security activities desired outcomes and applicable references that are common across critical sectors so there are five components which are the cyber security activities need to be done so these five components are identify protect detect respond and recover the framework is available in a public domain from NIST website you can get it and go through it so here are the functions we have to do like uh, uh, we already have discussed these five so what you need to be done in a identify category identify functions there are a categories and subcategories defined in the framework and then there are references to other like ISO 27001 and other standards uh, what type of a uh, categories and subcategories need to done in a product then detect if there is some attack going on some abnormal behavior in infrastructure respond to those attacks response to those threats and then recover if there is an incident on your infrastructure so that's the how the framework helps in improving the cyber security the cyber security capability maturity models so these maturity models can also be used to improve the cyber security preparedness of our organization it also helps to measure the current state of preparedness of an entity so cyber security capability maturity model uh, can be used by organizations to enhance its own cyber security capabilities so the basically the maturity models helps in it defines the current state it helps you to assess where you stand today determine its future more mature state where you have to go and uh, identify the capabilities what type sorts of action you need to attend uh, that future state what you need to do to achieve that future state so that's the cyber security capability maturity models those models can be adopted by organization to improve the cyber security so maturity uh, indicator labels the model defines four immaturity indicators stable from this um, level zero to uh, level three and there are ten domains under this uh, c to m2 model so these ten model domains are listed here the risk management asset change and configuration management identity and access management threat and vulnerability management situational awareness information sharing and communications event and incident response continuity of operation supply chain and external dependency management workforce management cyber security program management so in these 10 domains what are the maturity level of an organization so maturity level 0 to maturity level 3 is assigned to those 10 domains to measure and then what the organization need to do to further 
improve their maturity. So these models can be used to assess the current state and determine the future state of the organization. So sometimes you may not be able to implement the complete framework due to the lack of resources or budget. So what you can have is the CIS 20 critical security controls. So these are the 20 list of 20 critical security controls. These are the recommended set of actions for cyber defense that provide a specific and actionable way to stop today's most pervasive and dangerous attack. So this 20 controls if implemented will help help you to counter the most dangerous attacks so these are the prioritized list and focus a small number of actions with high payoff results so these are focus on the what the 20 things we have to do to protect against the cyber attacks the controls are effective because they are derived from the most common attack patterns highlighted in the leading threat reports and vetted across a very broad community of government and industry practitioners. So this is the way that list is prepared and maintained. So what is there in a list is uh, such as the inventory of authorized and unauthorized devices. The organization must maintain the inventory of what is authorized and unauthorized hardware devices in their environment. They should have the capability to detect that. Inventory of authorized and unauthorized software in their infrastructure that capability the organization should have secure configurations templates for hardware and software on mobile devices laptop workstation and servers should be maintained continuous vulnerability assessment and remediation need to be done controlled use of administrative privileges maintenance monitoring and analysis of audit logs seventh is the email and web browser protection need to be implemented Malware defense, anti-malware solution, antivirus solution need to be implemented in organization. And uh, services, ports and protocols should be limited as per the need only. And uh, there should be the data recovery capability within our organization. Secure configuration for network devices such as firewalls, router and switches. The boundary defense, boundary protection devices like intrusion detection system, firewalls, intrusion prevention system need to be implemented. Data protection, data leak protection need to be implemented in our organization. Control access based on the need to know. So access should be provided based on the need to know. And uh, wireless access control, account monitoring and control, security skills assessment and appropriate training to fill gaps in the employee we have to do that assessment and we have to provide them training and conduct the awareness programs also application sec software security the code level security the secure software development life cycle then the 19th is the we must have the incident response and management and the penetration tests and dead time exercises need to be conducted by the organization. So these are the list of 20 controls. These are regularly updated. It's also available from the CIS Center for Security website. You can download 20 controls. There you will also find that how to implement these controls, how to automate these controls, how to do the assessment against these controls. So this is the list of 20 controls which can be implemented to generate the assurance within our organization. Sometimes it may be difficult for our organization to do even the 20 things. So what is the way to go ahead to do with the minimum things? So we call it the cyber security must have. So at least implement the five controls. So here we listed the five top controls which can be used by your organization to start with. So this is the inventory of a hardware and a software. So organizations should maintain the inventory of hardware and a software within our organization so that it can be determine what is authorized and what is unauthorized. The secure configurations of our hardware, mobile devices need to be implemented. There should be a continuous vulnerability management. If there is a vulnerability in a system, in a server, in an infrastructure or a device, then it should be the pass. Then there should be the control use of administrative privileges should not be distributed to all and it should only be provided in a control manner. Anti-malware solution, antivirus solution is a requirement of these five controls so that need to be implemented. So what we are 
can be done is that to start with the five controls, move to the 20 critical controls, then go for the implementation of cyber security framework, uh, implement some maturity model, and then the finally you can go for a ISO 27001 standard and imp certification and implementation of that standard. So that roadmap as per the requirement of organization can be implemented and this will provide you, this will uh, help you to have assurance and confidence on the cyber security uh, posture of your organization. So these are, these are the uh, standards and framework which can be implemented. Uh, the, there are a future research direction that uh, national cyber security assurance framework um, need to be developed. There is a need of a cyber security exercises as benchmarking tool. How we can use these exercises for benchmarking or generating assurance at a national level. Development and testing of methods for generating cyber security assurance and regional and national level what new methods, what type of a techniques, what type of practices we can develop to have a cyber security assurance that's a fact based, evidence based confidence on a cyber security posture of a entity, sector or a country. So in this session we have discussed about the cyber security assurance and benchmarking practices followed by the different countries. We have done the analysis and uh, uh, discussion on the methods and practices such as the cyber security exercises, annual reports and how the countries can adopt the cyber security assurance uh, methods to generate the assurance at a national level, sector level and organization level. We have also seen the what is the possible roadmap for the organization to improve their cyber security preparedness by following the cyber security must have 20 critical controls, list cyber security framework and information security management system. Thank you.